This video is brought to you by Don't ever let them put you in a box. Don't ever let them predict your next move. And most of all, don't ever stop motivating them. Cool green clothing, top of the line men's bed oil, coming soon. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you ain't cool and getting the green, you're in the way. And that's just basic. I, I. It's your girl, Mrs. Tony Two Times, and I'm back with another episode of The Baltimore Way. In this video, I'll be taking it just northeast of Baltimore to Edgewood to discuss the 2022 slaying of Keisha Lene Blackwell at the hands of her estranged husband, Jamar Deverick Wise. But before we get into this video, please hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And of course, feel free to share this video with everyone you know. Also, if you'd like to see more episodes of The Baltimore Way, please click the link to the playlist in the description box after this video to get caught up. All right, let's get into it. It was a typical Tuesday afternoon on Majesty Lane in Edgewood, Maryland on December 20th, 2022. A nearby resident was cooking on the grill as the sun began to set. The next thing they know, chaos erupted in the rather quiet neighborhood. Just after 5 p.m., helicopters swirled above and police cars and emergency personnel swarmed the street. Across the street at the 2800 block of Majesty Lane, 46-year-old Keisha Blackwell had been shot in front of her children and the horrific incident had all been captured on video. Keisha was rushed to a nearby trauma center to be treated for her wounds. As police spoke to witnesses, they quickly learned that Keisha's estranged husband, 42-year-old Jamar Wise, was the perpetrator. He fled the scene just before police arrived. The manhunt for Jamar began as Keisha clinged to life. Keisha Lene Blackwell was born on June 24, 1976. She was a beloved mother of five children. Keisha's love and compassion for children didn't stop with her biological children but she also fostered children in need of a nurturing home. Keisha worked hard and gave back to her community. At some point in life, Keisha met and married Jamar Wise. In early 2022, Keisha and Jamar's relationship had reached its breaking point. Things got so bad, Keisha pressed charges against Jamar, accusing him of stalking and harassment. A restraining order was placed against Jamar for DV. He was ordered to not have any sort of contact with Keisha and was ordered to stay away from her. Keisha also filed for divorce from Jamar. Despite all her attempts to separate herself from Jamar, he continued to violate the restraining order by contacting Keisha via the telephone, contacting her through family and friends, and through letters he left at her home in Edgewood. In one letter, Jamar wrote to Keisha and said, You slain me. Thank you. After months of Jamar's antics, Keisha reported Jamar's numerous plows and attempts to get in contact with her to the police. He was in violation of the restraining order. However, when police caught up to Jamar, he wasn't arrested or taken to jail, which is what should have happened. A court date for Keisha and Jamar's divorce was scheduled for a hearing on the settlement on March 9th, 2023. Keisha and her family hoped that with the courts involved and making sure they took all the right steps, that Jamar would retreat and begin to accept the relationship between him and Keisha was over. But the opposite would occur on December 20th, 2022. According to court records, Jamar, who was living in nearby Baltimore County in Towson, rented a dark colored minivan in hopes that he wouldn't be recognized 
and drove to Keisha's house in Edgewood. He laid in wait for his estranged wife. When Jamar saw Keisha, he confronted her and the two started arguing in her driveway about money that Jamar had owed her. At this point, Keisha's 15-year-old daughter called 911 around 5.13 p.m. to report that Jamar had violated the restraining order. A next-door neighbor began to record the incident on their cell phone. Jamar suddenly walks off and goes to the minivan and pulls out a firearm. He walked back towards Keisha's driveway and fired two rounds at Keisha. The second shot critically wounded Keisha. Jamar then fled the scene in the rental car moments before police arrived. Not only did Keisha's 15-year-old daughter witness what happened to her mother, but her two foster daughters were also at home with at least one of them also witnessing what happened. With all the tips, eyewitnesses, and the video that captured the entire incident, detectives knew for sure that Jamar was responsible for what happened to Keisha. The Harford County Sheriff's Office was assisted in the search for Jamar by Baltimore County Police and other local law enforcement agencies. The following day on Wednesday, December 21st, 2022, Keisha sadly succumbed to her injuries and was pronounced gone at 4.13 p.m. Keisha's case was now a homicide. A day after Keisha passed away, Jamar was captured in Hanover, Pennsylvania at a gas station where he had been spotted. After negotiations over the phone with the Harford County Sheriff's Office, law enforcement in Pennsylvania took Jamar into custody without incident. The stolen firearm he used to slay his wife was in his possession at the time of his arrest. Keisha was laid to rest in January 2023. Keisha was described as an extraordinary individual, mother and foster parent. She is loved and missed by everyone who got the chance to know her. In February 2024, Jamar pleaded guilty to first degree hit in connection to slaying Keisha. He was sentenced on Friday, May 10th to life in prison without the possibility of parole. May Keisha Blackwell continue to rest in peace. My belated condolences to her children, family, and loved ones. Keisha's story is another case of DV that law enforcement unfortunately was not able to stop before someone lost their life. Keisha clearly did all the right things and Jamar should have been locked up the first time he violated the restraining order. It's hard to comprehend why these cases that include clear threats of physical harm are not taken more seriously. Although the system can be flawed, it is still important to take all the right steps if you are going through a DV situation or dealing with an unstable person in general. A legal paper trail helps to show the person's pattern of behavior in hopes of them one day being held responsible before it's too late. Do you believe that Keisha Slane could have been avoided? What do you think needs to change with the legal system to keep survivors safe? Have you seen any improvements since the rise of these type of cases over the last few years? Fam, tell me your thoughts on these questions and this tragic story in the comments below. All right, fam, that's it for this episode of The Baltimore Way. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is your girl, Mrs. Tony Two Times. Until next time.